do it yourself because it's satisfying. Hey guys, welcome to the Hey guys, welcome to a new video and welcome to the channel. Behind me what you can actually see that's my Renault Clio. Just doing a maintenance work on that and a few other bits and bobs. Doing an oil change, air filter, fuel filter, also doing the brakes, front brakes, disc and pads. So this is not gonna be a how-to video no, but it's more like I'm just showing like what I'm doing in my car today. It's gonna be long, so I will just show bits and bobs edited and stuff. Yeah enjoy I've already done the job here that you can see so that's the new Brambo disc and pad that I've just installed and look at how warm that was really look at this can you see that that's pretty warm also use copper grease so that means it's easy to take the wheels off for next time um, yeah I want to show you this I normally do my oil change every like six to eight thousand miles so this is nine thousand miles and look at how black this is now the thing is, as you know, manufacturers, they actually recommend you guys to do it like 15 to 20,000. That's ridiculous. I do get it why manufacturers recommend that sort of service intervals, but you know what? It's my car. I like to have my own way of looking after it. Now, this is something I really wanted to show you guys because this is something you might actually come across if you're doing brake change on any car. And for you know what? Let me share these tips with you because man it was painful so basically when i was trying to do this brake this brake uh, disc so it won't come off the small screw that goes on the disc that won't come off so these are the small two tips that i want to show you in case if you guys are stuck so it should help so let me take this out so this is how it should be basically this in most cases if you have rounded up it can be a pain in the ass i got one of this drill got a drill bit on it a bit fat one and just kept drilling it just like this okay. as i was drilling like this so i had to make sure that i do the other side as well so anti-clockwise so this thing can open and then eventually i bloody got this thing out which was proper pain in the ass so that's one and the next one is once you get this out sometimes this disc it doesn't want to come out because there's rust that kind of builds up at the back so that, now there's few ways which you can actually take it out. One is hammer, you hammer this out on, on the front of the disc because it's not that you're going to use it, you're probably going to replace it. So hammer this out, if that works, it works. If it doesn't, there's another trick that kind of works for me. So, I mean, I move the steering this way so you guys actually can see. Just get a bolt, then what we're going to do is put this here like this what we have to make sure is this bolt is touching the disc so that's what we got to make sure that it does so as you can see it's very close and then we use a ratchet and basically tight it up as much as we can and tight it up tight it up and what you're gonna hear is a small pop and once you hit the pop you know it's gonna be your disc coming out and that sound is probably one of the best sound you're probably gonna hear when you're doing a brake job this is something I've actually come across um, with this problem while I was working in this car which the small screw won't come off from the disc and second thing is this brake disc was completely kind of seized so yeah so that's how you can actually get your um, brake disc off once you do your brake job just also make sure to use a bit of copper grease on top of here so next time when somebody do it or maybe when you do it the brake disc will come off nice and easy yeah let's just go ahead with changing the brake disc and pads first let's use a bit of brake cleaner take this out clean this and I'll re-lubricate it so this can easily move in and out just like this you see
when it comes to brake job i like to replace it with a high quality brake because brakes are very important a uh, safety feature of a car using a bramble pads now before i install that i'm using a bit of copper grease on the pad so it can prevent from any squeaky noise when braking because i hate that I've already put the piston back off camera using a specialized tool. It's just putting the caliper back and the bolt back. See the brake job is now complete. There's a new Rambo pads in there, which you can see, and disc. Once you put the pads and disc back and bolts been tightened up, this is a step you sh must not forget because you have to pump the brake. If you don't pump the brake, you will not have brakes at all. So what you do is basically go inside the car and keep pressing the brake until it's hard. Now, before you take it on the road, just start the car, go forward a bit, back, backward a bit, so you know it's working before you start driving. I'm changing the brake fluid in my car. Now, brake fluid is another maintenance and service job that often people skip. It should be flushed every two to three years, depending on manufacturer's recommendation. The thing with brake fluid is it's hydroscopic, which actually means the brake fluid likes to absorb water. Now, if water gets into your brake, your brakes will be less effective. Before starting the operation, clean the master cylinder area with a clean tissue or cloth as you don't want any dirt to go into it. Also, get some brake fluid out of the master cylinder and refill it with new brake fluid so when you're flushing your brake, you're using new fluid. Here, you can actually see that's the extracted brake fluid. It's a bit dirty, but yeah, I want it to be proper, nice and clean. Now for the brake fluid, I bought one liter of DOT for brake fluid. Depending on your car, and what's recommended, use the correct brake fluid when flushing your brakes. To do this job, there are a few methods which can be used. The method I'm using is a one-man method in which I will be using a handheld brake bleeder. This is inexpensive and very easy to use. It can also be found online or at your local parts store. This handheld brake bleeder kit comes with bleeder nipple, some clear pipes and manual hand pump pressure gauge to create vacuum. I'm starting from the rear passenger side wheel on the drum brakes. The rule states for the brake fluid changes, you gotta start from the furthest from the master cylinder first and then follow your order. As you can see, I've actually taken the wheels off so it's easy for me to access the bleeder valve. Now you can actually leave your wheels on as long as you can access the bleeder valve. Put on the clear pipe and make sure it sits tight and if it doesn't, you can actually use a zip tie to tighten it up so no air gets in. Then create some vacuum and using the wrench, open up the bleeder valve. You will see air bubble, let the air go and then close the bleeder valve. Again, create vacuum using the hand pump and then open up the bleeder valve. Again, let the fluid pass until you see clear brake fluid. Repeat this process a few times and after that you will have new brake fluid on the line. Also to mention, like if you look at the pipe, I've actually put, placed it that way so the air can go upward. So we're pushing the air away from the system. So you can actually see the brake fluid dropped a bit. So I will top up as I go along. During this operation, it's vital that you keep checking the master cylinder often so it don't get empty. Otherwise, air will get in and you gotta start the whole process again. So you can actually see the line is now cleared. Don't really see any visible bubble, which is good. Brake line is nice and clear now. So I'll just close it out and move on to the next one. This is a one-man method and it's very easy to follow to be honest. And yeah, that's it really. That's how you change your brake fluid on your car. Here's the brake fluid that I've extracted from the brake line. Now make sure you take it to your local recycling center and get this disposed. So for the front brakes, the process is exactly the same. So repeat it few times until you get clean brake fluid on your lines. To complete the operation, make sure you top up the brake reservoir and pump the brake and make sure the brakes are working before you start driving.
what I will also do is I will replace the controller arm which is there and also replace the drop link there's a slight knocking noise when I go over the humps that should sort it out now for the control arm I had to remove this frame just so I can access one of the bolts there uh, typical French design I guess this is driver side here's the new drop link we already done wasn't that bad and yeah let's go on let's get this side on drop rings are actually hold by two bolt one at the top and one at the lower end now on this one it's at the back side which is very hard for me to show it on the camera but it's literally same as the top one you just get a 16 mil spanner and you get the special allen key and get it out let's see with this one so this is the back one now it can be a little fiddlish it's just a matter of just be patient and yeah so that's the old drop link uh, that's a bit short it's a bit of play you can see here and you just install the new one That's how easy it is to install the drop link on this car. This actually improves the vehicle stability. I'm trying to get the control arm off with this fork that I just quickly bought it from Euro Car Parts. I got a different one. I tried to use that. I didn't really take it off. And now I'm using this. Hopefully, this should come off. Now this special tool that I'm actually hammering right now that you see in the video, it's called a ball joint splitter. I got this from Eurocar Parts, it was $8.99, but therefore worth it. A uh, few bangs and guess what, the control arm was out. It's out. Good thing. Whew. Boy, a nightmare to get this rubbish out. Now the other part of control arm was stuck, so I used a big screwdriver. I was fiddling with it and managed to take it out. So guys, here's the update. Finally installed the control arm. Now replacing the control arm might can look fairly easy on videos and it kind of varies from car to car. If the car is rusty and the bolts are rusted, well, it's gonna be a lot more harder than what you actually see on the video. So the best is just take it to a garage and let the professional do it. Or if you're confident enough, just make sure you got the right tool to get the job done. Taking a small break from this work and let's just go for a driveway walk. Now that's my BMW E30 and gosh still looking good. 30 years old original paint. Ah oh, man. The reliable Jeff S Micra with orange wheels. Then this is the Banganomics, the new one on my driver collection, Nissan Almera 1998 1 1.6 liter petrol automatic with a sunroof on it. Reliability of this car has been excellent so far except there's a lot of bodywork issue, each panel screaming out, I've been parked in London. Now the next thing is, as you can see, a rust work has been done on this car but doesn't matter, it's in Scotland now it's gonna get worse. So what do you think of my driver collection and let's get back to Clio. Probably changing the oil the Clio. Normally do it like every eight to ten thousand mile. To do it because I do it myself. And second of all, it does get dirty, and I don't like dirty oil in my car. So yeah, let's go and let's carry on with oil change on this. Yes. So the things that we need for oil change is basically very basic oil filter of then the oil. For this one, I think it's about 4.6 to 4.8 liter of oil that it needs. Then I got this special drain plug for this car normally a socket that you can use but typical french cars this is optional for this car you also need an oil filter remover in case you can't take the filter off using hand using jack and jack stand lift up the car and remove the plastic trim to remove it it's basically a few screws and nuts like this then you'll be able to access the oil sump the last oil change i've actually done myself so I've not really made it crazy tight so I can literally use my hand which you can see here and I can just take it off. In case in your car if you can't you use your hand to remove the oil filter then use the oil filter removal tool to remove the oil filter from the housing. So I left a bucket underneath there will be a bit of spillage the remaining of the oil will go right into the bucket. So here's the old oil filter. This is a good practice before installing the new oil filter is to put a bit of oil inside the new oil filter and also lubricate the rubber gasket on the oil filter. 
There's not a lot of oil because I've already drained the oil off camera before I was waiting for the sump plug. Every time I do an oil change, I always like to replace the sump plug and the gasket. So this is 9,000 mile and look at how black this is. Let's just put some new oil now. In this car, roughly, I gotta put like 4.6, 4.8 liter. So what I'll do is I'll put up to 4.2 and then get it to a ground level so the car is flat. Then do a check and then top up. And then what I will do is just drive for a bit so the oil settles down. It requires more oil, then I'll just top it up according to that. So that's how you actually change oil. The clear. how easy is that? You can just do this at home with a basic tool. I get it, you can avoid warranty. Mine is not on warranty, so I don't really care. Yeah, I'm still trying to look after my engine. So guys, I'm inside the Clio and this is how you reset the oil light. It's pretty straightforward, so put the key in, which is just there. Don't start the engine. Then using this drop up and down. So let's go back, back, back. I should see service interval. There we go. Once you see that, then you keep holding the upper arrow and then it will get into the service interval yep there we go now that's when my next service is due but i've already done the service as you know i like to do my service a bit earlier so i'll hold the hopper stock again keep holding it for a few seconds it should blink it's blinking now right so the oil change has been resetted so is the service both of those has been resetted so there will be no light and yeah that's how you reset the yeah service light in your Renault Clio done now let me take the key out and let me put that in brilliant so here's how you change the air filter in Clio I already got the filter here which is Bosch probably the easiest thing you can do in this car air filter is right on the top here so there's a clip on both of this side you press it from here and bang it's out you see that and this is all filter it's a bit dirty it's not that bad i've seen worse so yeah we'll just give it a clean you can see it's still clean in there Old versus new, I always like to do that. And that is it, that's how you install a new air filter in your clear. So yeah, make sure you give it a little thumbs up if you like this. Now moving on onto fuel filter. To access the fuel filter, first make sure the wheels are off on the driver's side. Then remove the fender. This fender is secured by guard clips, which you can remove using screwdriver. Be careful because you can snap them easily. Also, there's a small screw which holds the fender from the bottom, which you will also need to remove. Once all the guard pins and screw is removed, you can gently pull the fender towards you. Now you can access the fuel filter. Anyways, what I also do is I actually like to keep myself to space. So I could just in case if one of them breaks. I can just get it replaced. Using a 10mm, just remove this bolt and then you can access the fuel filter. Just gonna get a flathead screwdriver and I'm trying to remove the connection. So here's the replacement fuel filter made in Morocco. This is a pretty good one, just plug and play. So unlike the other fuel filter where I will have to take the filter off from the housing, remove the screw, in this one I don't have to do that. So it's just a straight swap and it's ready to go. Powerful, I will just also mention. So this, you can take it off just like this and I'll put in the new one. Once the 
fuel filter is installed put the key in the ignition let the fuel pump run the fuel into the fuel filter uh, wait for a minute or so and then you can start the car What you can actually see me doing is I'm putting back the radiator mounting cross member. Now I had to remove that just so that I can remove one of the bolt from the control arm. Now putting it back wasn't easy, it was a bit of play. Uh, there's a small rubber thing that goes under the radiator so I had to take that out and push it back to install back the uh, frame member. So this is the last ball installed on the radiator cross member. As I said, it was a nightmare to install this back, but got there eventually. Now I'll put the plastic trim back and put everything back. Guys, that's done. All the plastic bits and bobs are in. Personally, I'm not very keen on the Reynolds oil dipstick because simply it doesn't give the right reading straight away. Let's check the oil now. Uh, do you see what I mean? It's so hard to say with this dipstick. Honestly, I hate this dipstick. Now, let me have a look again. You can see, yep, it's to the max now. That's done, fresh oil, about 78,000 mile, and then I'll change the oil again, sweet. Guys, so this is the last thing I gotta do, which is remove the pollen filter in this car. To access the pollen filter, it's right underneath the glove box, and it's on the right hand side, under the glove box, there's a screw that needs to be removed, and the pollen filter will come off. Filter off. It says the new filter. Eventually got there, service has been done and this is something I wanted to share with you guys and honestly I love working on my own car when I can. The more important thing is satisfaction. When you work in your own car, the satisfaction you get is incredible. That's something you can actually see how easy it is to do it yourself on your own drive or somewhere safe. So the best way to prepare yourself is getting the right tool for the right job. As long as you use the right tool, yes, right tool does matter when it comes to working on your car. It just makes your life a hell lot easier. Don't you work on your own car and just maybe make a small start. Start by changing your light bulb or maybe, I don't know, just put a seat cover on or something. And thank you guys for watching this video. If you have liked this video, give it a little thumbs up, share, comment, subscribe, all that thing. And I'll see you for next time. Goodbye.